The Endodore camera, also known as the UDC, has a powerful gadget that attackers can use to check what's behind doors. This is extremely useful on maps with tight corridors and multiple doors or levels that do not provide ways for attackers to see what's inside rooms from the outside. Maps such as Cafe 14, with a flat and a basement, is a perfect example of a map where the UDC can be extremely useful, since the doors won't let more than one operator to go through at a time, so you cannot pile corners properly or check multiple angles at once before going through doors. There is also no way for you to look into several rooms from the outside. And so that's when the UDC can be very useful, since you can check what's behind doors, you can check both sides before breaching through a door, you can avoid defenders who are waiting in the corner with an angle on you, and so on. In this video, I will go over some of the basics, the do's and the don'ts on how to use the UDC in Zero Hour, and I will share some of my favorite spots where to use the UDC. Let's start with the basics. To use the UDC, first make sure you have it selected as your second gadget during the loadout phase. Once in game, press 4 to have the UDC selected as your current active gadget, get close to the door, aim at the base of the door, and hold G to place it. Once your UDC is placed, hold G to use the UDC display and move the mouse to move the camera. Other operators can also look at the display which makes it easier to communicate information with the rest of your team, especially those who are going to breach with you. Please note that you need to be close enough to your UDC for the display to work. If you are close enough, the light of the UDC will be green and then you can use the display by holding G. If you are not close enough, the display won't work and the light on the UDC will remain red until you are close enough again. To remove the UDC, simply get close to it and hold F until it's removed. When trying to install or operate the UDC, your weapon might clip through the door if you're too close to it. This will let the defenders know that you are behind the door and they will most likely shoot through it to kill you. So the first thing you should avoid is trying to install the UDC when facing the door. Try to be on the side of the door, and even if you might not be close enough to open the door, you can still install the UDC. At the time of recording, your character's camera and the UDC camera are linked. So when you are not checking the display and moving your camera and your weapon, it will also change the angle you had for the UDC. Hopefully this is also something that will be improved in the future. Now that the UDC can be destroyed by the defenders, and the UDC cannot be used in the dark. It currently does not have any night visions or thermal mods, and you obviously cannot see anything even if you are using your night visions. Also, please note that at the time of recording, the thread of the door traps do not get displayed on the UDC screen. So even if you check the room and you didn't see any defenders and you thought it was clear, you should still be careful before breaching and open the door slightly to check if there is a door trap and defuse it before breaching. Like I said earlier, the UDC can be one shot by the defenders and it's not the most discreet device. So I would suggest using the UDC to check what's behind doors of large or dark rooms and long corridors mostly. That way it's harder for the defenders to notice and shoot it. This is where map knowledge is really important. If you are the only one with the UDC in your team, maybe avoid using it on doors that you know there is most likely going to be a defender behind it, camping and waiting for you. The kitchens on Terror House are a great example of that. You would rather anticipate the fact that there could be a defender there and throw a frag grenade in there. So here are some of my favorite spots to use the UDC. On Cafe 14, I like using the UDC on the door that leads to the L-shaped corridor at the pharmacy and check the toilet on the left side just in case someone is waiting there, waiting for the attackers to push towards the cafe. I also like using the UDC on the door that leads to the other corridor just in case someone is waiting behind. The UDC would probably be most useful in the basement. What I like doing is checking the small room that leads to the fake doors. So that's a good one. And once I'm in, I will also check the fake door just to make sure nobody has an angle on it from the other side. So let's say someone who's camping in the studios. I will also use the UDC to check the torture room and the other torture rooms. 
So when you come from the other side of the basement. And there again, I will strongly encourage you to check the room that leads to the fake doors behind the fake doors as well, because there are too many angles and too many small corridors where too many people can just hide. So the UDC is extremely useful on this one. Moving on to Tower House, I like using the UDC at the main entrance just to check if there is someone camping the bracket switch from the stairs. And you can also use the UDC to check the distribution room. There are two doors there. Now this one, there is also a window at the back. You can actually peek through it. You can actually vote and get into the distribution room. But I prefer going through the whole room and use the UDC to check this one. Make sure there is no one. And if there is a one, then I would coordinate with someone who is flanking them from the outside through the window. That's a pretty good tactic here. Then we will switch to the second and the third floor. Again, the UDC will be extremely useful to check the master bedrooms. These rooms also have two doors and there is no way to actually check what's inside from the outside. You cannot climb this wall. So the UDC is pretty useful. You would sometimes have someone camping in the toilet and maybe using the procedural prop placements to hide behind props and have a good angle on the doors. Moving on to banks, there are not that many opportunities to use the UDC on this map because everything is made of glass and windows and so on. But I do like using the UDC on the chairman room because it's like two rooms connected through a hole in the wall. So you can check the door on the far left side that will usually give you an overview on the objective. You can also check the door in the middle and then you can check the door on the far right side, which would give you insights on what's going on in the room connected to the chairman room. So that's pretty good as well. On Cafe 14, I do like using the UDC on the checking and packing area, mostly because, yes, you could check inside from the windows, but I prefer taking it safe and using the UDC to check what's going on on this one, just in case someone is camping there, especially the toilets. Moving on to the generator room, I think the UDC is really useful here because it's a small room with two doors usually closed and this is where the objective could be placed as well. And you can really have a good look at what's going on in this room if you place the UDC on both doors. So what I usually do is I check on one door and then I would go to the next one and place the UDC there. You just need to be careful that nobody is camping in the different areas, especially the lab number one, where the breaker switch is placed. Talking about the breaker switch, it's good to come from the north side, down the stairs and put the UDC there just to make sure nobody is camping the breaker switch. You can do that on other maps, such as Hotel Trouble as well. You can check if there is someone camping the breaker switch instead of going through the parking lot. I also like using the UDC to check if there is someone camping the staircases. So that's a really good strategy as well. I usually hide in linen room or the storage room. And with this, I can actually check if someone is camping me. And you can also use the UDC to check room 302 and 304. And that's pretty good actually, because you could have part of your team waiting at the balcony and then you can go there. You can go to the rooms. You can place your UDC at the, at the door and then you can give intel to the rest of your team before they bridge in. So that's a pretty good way to coordinate with your team using the UDC as well. Another thing that I do a lot is also um, providing overwatch from the balcony all the way at the end of the corridor. And what I do is that I sometimes place a UDC there just to make sure that nobody's actually camping this one before I take a peek and get shot in the face because someone was there waiting and knowing that I will be there as well. And so this is it for this video about how to use the UDC properly. Consider leaving a like if you found this video useful and let me know in the comments below how you would like to see the team improve the UDC in the future. If you want to support the channel, subscribe and tick the bell to never miss any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.